first, we've got Vicky from Liverpool on line three. Morning, Vicky. Hi. 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 There. What's up with you and yours then? Um, basically, what it is at the moment is I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, both boys, um, and the problem is they cannot be in the same room as each other at the moment. At the moment, um, or this has gone on for some time? This has gone on for basically for the past, I'd say, twelve months or so. Um, since since the two-year-old has started to grasp that. You know, he can do things himself and I'm not going to let this five-year-old take this thing off me. And they've both got such strong personalities um, that they're just clashing so, so okay. much. And the anger between them, if one has got a toy that the other one wants, there's just uproar. And right, I Vicky. just cannot, they won't listen to a thing I say. They're basically physically being so physical with each other that I'm, I'm worried now, you know. So. Okay, okay, Vicky, let's, let's see what Lorena has to right, say here. okay, good morning, Vicky. Morning. Um, what I would actually say is you have to remember that the five-year-old has been an only child for three years. Mm. Sure. And suddenly somebody comes along and starts taking his things, sure, right? Yeah. So what you need to do is you need to make some very... And, of course, it's all about attention, you realise that. Yes, yeah. So what you need to do is to make some very simple rules and make them visual so you can have a photograph of a child with the two of them playing nicely together with a big smiley face and a big tick next to it right and mummy looking very happy about this and then the same thing in reverse when they're fighting with each other right. when they're playing nicely together that's the point that you come in with a descriptive praise how lovely you're playing i'm really proud of you this is so nice that you're not arguing with each other two wonderful sons that I've got, etc., etc. when they're being negative and bashing the hell out of each yeah. other, that's the point that you turn around and say, oh, I'm so disappointed, you're letting me down, you're letting yourselves down, and walk away. When right. you get involved, I mean, if they are really hurting each other, clearly you need to step in and do something. Sure. Yeah. If yeah. they're just kind of pulling at toys and things, what they want is your attention. Right. It's, it's basically the five-year-olds now become... Uh, out showing the two-year-old that it, aggression and, you know, uh, to go and punch you to get this toy is the way that it's sort of being. I'm just worried that the two-year-old now is then going to go out with other people and think this is the only way that I can get what I want is to be aggressive in this way. And, of course, what you're doing then in that case is you're setting it up when this child goes to nursery yeah. that that's what he will do with the other children. And, and just, like, just so unclear about time, because it, it, we could go a little bit more into this. So... Good behaviour, mum comes in, descriptive praise about how well they're doing. Yeah. Does mum then stay and, and, and give more of her time? Well, Because yeah, you said in the other case she walks away, or having said you're letting yourselves down, you're letting yeah. me down, you know, I'm not impressed and walk away. I'm just wondering in the first case whether she should then ha hang out for 20 minutes or so. I think, it ha I think it very much depends. If you've got the time to sit there and play and, and you know, kind of work between the two yeah. of them and play with each one of them equally or sometimes it doesn't even have to be equally, can be together yeah. or separately, whatever. Yes, but you can't always no. do that. I, I, I understand right? That's it's... the point. So I would say it has to be around what time that you've got. You may be in the kitchen washing up, doing something. You hear this noise, you turn around and they're battling with each other. That's the point. You stop what you're doing and go and deal with the situation. Okay. There we go. Good luck to you, Vicky. I reckon, I reckon the solution is just around the corner, actually. I'll have another call, please, Karen. This is Sarah from Blackpool on line two now. Sarah, good morning. Hello. Hi there. What's up with yours? Uh, right, well, my little boy is five on yeah. Saturday, right. and he just won't go to bed on his own, and he sleeps with me, I'm afraid. <laughs> five years old? Yeah, mm. and he sleeps with me, he won't go to bed, he said he's scared. Hmm, Noreen, I can imagine what you're about to say. <laughs> I'm going I'm to sit quietly down the end, Sarah, you're on your own on this one. <laughs> Right, what I would do is I would take your son up to bed and I would prepare this, for, so prepare what I call prepare for success. Okay. Take him upstairs and talk about what a good boy he is, how proud of him you are, that he stays in his own bed. And then I would say, okay, what is it that you're scared of? So let's explore what it is that you're scared of, right? There's monsters under the bed. I had one little boy who told me there was monsters under the bed. So we went and we looked and we got the sword and we made sure that all the monsters under the bed who didn't exist, there's nothing there, etc. We went through the whole process. So what we did was we just made sure that he, he knew that I knew I didn't believe it, yes. right? That was the point. So we did all of that. And then you start by sitting on a chair outside the door. 
right, put a little light in his room, sit outside for five minutes outside the door, move, sit at the top of the stairs, go from the top of the stairs to halfway down the stairs, and don't get involved, Sarah. Okay. Right? Because I suspect it goes something like this. Mummy! <laughs> and you go, yes. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Now go to sleep. Yeah. Mummy, I still love you. Yes, I still love you. Now go to sleep, right? I am the monster. I am the monster. Oh, oh. oh God, I forgot to check under the bed. Silly mum. You've been waiting for that, haven't you? Right, is that pretty much how it works? Well, yeah, or we'll ask for a drink. Right, OK. So what you do is, before you go to bed, before you take him to bed, you say, right, what do you need to do before you go to bed? I need a drink, I need to go to the toilet. Do you read a story with him? Yes. Yeah. Good. OK, so he has his story, and then you say, now I'm going to sit outside the door for five minutes and show him what five minutes looks like. Yeah. Right? get him a clock in his room, you know, anything like that that you can see what five minutes is. Move to the top of the stairs, move halfway down the stairs, and when he, get, when he does the mummy, mummy business, then you turn around and go, mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. So, because what he wants is he wants to engage you in a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get involved in okay. a conversation. And the next morning, when he gets up, you say to him, you were absolutely brilliant last night. I was allowed to go. You let me go downstairs. It was terrific. You did really well. And the same thing when he goes to bed at night. And within two or three days, it'll be sorted. I had one lady who sat outside her daughter's room with her cigarettes. I'm not advocating people no. smoke, but I'm just saying with her cigarettes, a bottle of scotch and a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours later, the child went to bed. However, the next night... 20 minutes. That makes a big difference. It really does. Good yeah. luck to you, Sarah. We'll get one more in if we're very quick, I think, Corinne. Okay, this is Jane from Manchester on line one. Morning, Jane. Good morning. What's up with your kids? Uh, I've got the perfect angel at home. Right. As soon as he walks through the school gates, he turns into a demon. How, how old is he? He's six. Brothers or sisters? No, he's an only one. Okay. Um, he just no respect for his teacher. His work's constantly sent home. He was, well, he was thrown out of nursery at three because they couldn't cope with him. He is very, very bright, and I'm wondering if they're not stimulating him off at school. OK. Lorraine? Um, I think the very, very bright thing is, is quite a difficult one, because unless you've actually got a diagnosis that says, you know, he is very, very bright, he's above average, I think it's just something that you're randomly kind of maybe. throwing out as a maybe, right? I think that I would be asking the teachers to make him a something monitor. So he needs to be the pencil monitor, the door monitor, the something. Some value, if the animal's in school, can he be the one that cleans out the hamster yeah. thing, mm -hmm. right? If that's what you like. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Get him to think about what his responsibility so in school is. he needs help is. from the school? He needs help from the school. And I would then say to the child, as you're leaving him in the morning, I know that today's going to be a great day. I know that I'm going to hear some wonderful things by the time I pick you up today. Get the school involved. You know, I, I, I have to say, good luck to you, Jane. I'm just sitting here, you know, I don't have kids, but every word you say makes perfect sense to me, apart from just monsters. Just common sense. <laughs> no, uh, maybe. Listen, time's almost out this morning, so no more calls today, I'm afraid.